other farmers also have that data, then they can learn from it, right? Because if, if I see that you're doing something on your farm that's environmentally friendly, I might be incentivized to do it on my farm as well, just by looking at the data, right? So yeah, I mean, peer to peer, that is, I would say that is a really strong component of farming communities everywhere. There's a reason why farming communities essentially are set up as cooperatives, mm -hmm. because they work together and help each other out and yeah. are always, you know, one person is like an early adopter of, let's say, a new tractor or a new <laughs> whatever. And then their mates see it and go oh i want that too <laughs> um, so yeah in the farming community i wouldn't that's not necessarily an effect of what it is that we're doing but that is the reality of the farming community that mm. is the culture within it yeah. um, and that is something that we um, are seeking to leverage with this idea of digital transformation and moving forward because um you know uh, farmers are excellent farmers and they're custodians custodians of the land what they're not doing like me is sitting six hours a day you know they're going, they're, 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 yeah they're not doing that yeah they are not doing that and they don't have the time out of their lives to like yeah. you know <laughs> that's so what we need to do is cooperate i have a certain set of skills they have a whole certain uh, enterprise together we can cooperate whether it's one farmer or different types of farmers, we can cooperate to help provide this pathway where, and very importantly, farmers can become trusted agents of self-reported data, mm -hmm. which is about impact. Yeah. Because what the Environmental Protection Agency does not have are sufficient local advisors to work with farmers the way that Chagask does. Chagask is the Agricultural Advisory Service and they have local farm advisors and farm advisory services where local farmers can find solutions for them in their locale, you know, what's worked with other people, all that kind of thing. There is nothing like that in, the, in, in environmental terms and it actually we already know that's what works for the farming community so mm -hmm. that's what we need to do the environmental protection agency is not certainly not quickly is not going to be resourced to that extent i would argue that uh that will never be enough okay because actually we don't need reporting once a year or twice a year what we need is access to real-time data yeah. to be able for ourselves as citizens in this country where all the rivers are where all the boglands are where you, you know so mm -hmm. we need this overview and we, while we do have access to some oversight there are some types of um let's say pollution events or weather events or uh other uh, external factors that can be established and examined through earth observation which is satellite based imagery right mm -hmm. uh, so we're we're already using that for some services what we haven't successfully done yet is to use it for real time validation of community information or data or validating on farm information so mm -hmm. that's what we have embarked on because we see it's really, really important to trust farmers yeah. uh, to, um, to farm in the right way. Like at the moment, we're already trusting them to do it because we're not measuring it, right? We say, you will farm in a way that doesn't pollute the land. Okay, then. Yes, I will do that. <laughs> and so we're already trusting them. Yeah. But if we're going to replicate the quality assurance scheme, it's going to be audited and it's going mm -hmm. to be contested. And so there are some aspects like the nitrogen derogation or so you need to uh, identify in advance every year how much nitrogen will be applied to your field and that could include slurry so we're talking about um uh, uh you know like uh cow waste and all that you need to calculate it and you get an allowance based on the amount of livestock you have mm -hmm. if you think you're going to exceed it you need to apply for a derogation in advance if you exceed that, you will pay a fine mm -hmm. at the end of the year. So this is relatively new in the last three to four years. Uh, and it has, it's been quite successful, I would say. Uh, I'm sure it's a headache um, because having to report data on things you never had to report on before is 
an yeah. admin thing. Yeah. But similarly, there are other things that so farmers have to manage their hed hedgerows. Mm -hmm. There are uh, regulations and directives around um, correct hedgerow management and wildlife protection. So farmers are already being tasked with these jobs, but there's no reporting on it. Mm -hmm. You can only report somebody if they've done it out of season and then they might be fined, maybe, might be. Yeah. That's not what we want. What we want is the, uh, the real-time information because these hedgerows are important, not just as field boundaries. They are important for uh, biodiversity. It, you know, in, 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 in a land like Ireland where farms are relatively small, the field boundaries are actually uh, established peripheral habitats, which are full of multiple different native species most of, most of the time, and are the habitat for various different types of wildlife, whether it's insects or foxes or rabbits, the yeah. hares, pheasants, you know, whatever. Um, and they are an important aspect of um, peripheral habitat management. Mm -hmm. And peripheral habitats are indicators of the impact of not just com commercial farming, but, but adverse weather events, rising temperatures. Um, Maybe society's yeah. impact on that as well. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. So uh, that's a massive big conversation. Like it's, these yeah, are really big things, but they're all set in the context of digital transformation. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see the full version, go to the Uncle Gold Podcast YouTube channel or watch the next clip.